Okay, I'm back with the second half of my video on narcissistic mothers. In this part, I want to talk about two related issues, psychological merger and envy, using the 2010 film Black Swan to illustrate them. So in the first part, I talked about boundary issues between narcissistic mothers and their children, like how Alice Ward in The Fighter regards her children as possessions. She manipulates her sons for selfish gain and expects her daughters to have no opinions that differ from her own. In Black Swan, Erica Sayer infantilizes her daughter Nina in order to maintain control over her. At the same time, she relates to Nina in an unnaturally youthful way, like their girlfriends, almost as if they're the same person. But when Nina mentions that she might be getting more stage time with her ballet company this coming season, Watch how Erica subtly belittles her. Look how pink, so pretty. Pretty. <laughs> You're in a good mood. Mm -hmm. He promised to feature me more this season. Well, he certainly should. You've been there long enough. And you're the most dedicated dancer in the company. Up. What's that? What? There. Nothing. Sure you don't want me to come with you? You sweet girl. Erica makes a small dig by mentioning how long Nina has been in the company and in the core, as if to suggest she doesn't have enough talent to be a real star. She also describes Nina as the most dedicated member of the company, not the most talented. At the beginning of this scene, Erica experiences her daughter as having no separate existence. And she comes across at times as a loving mother, at other times like a peer. But when Nina mentions her own bright future, Erica feels the difference between them. In that gap, envious feelings begin to arise and she quietly belittles her daughter. So the ballet company is mounting a new production of Swan Lake and Nina is being considered for the dual part of the black and white swans, the lead role. At first, Nina thinks she's been passed over for the part and she goes home bereft to the apartment she shares with her mother. Notice what a kindly mother Erica appears to be, stressing how well she can understand Nina, presumably because she has been through exactly the same experience. We later learn that Erica was once a member of the ballet corps herself. As long as Nina doesn't appear to be separate and enviable, Erica does a fairly convincing imitation of a loving mother. I know it's disappointing. And when you start getting older, there's all this ridiculous pressure. God knows I understand. But it's all right. No matter what. You'll probably get to dance the pas de quatre again. <laughs> That's such a wonderful part. Or maybe he'll make you a big swan. Either way, you'll shine. I you know. Everything will be better in the morning. It always is. As it turns out, the director actually does cast Nina in the part. In this next scene, Erica tries to celebrate the occasion with her daughter. My daughter, the Swan Queen. <laughs> it's our favorite, vanilla with strawberry filling. Oh, Mom, not too big. Oh, that's way, way too much. Oh, it's a celebration. It's just this once. Mom, my stomach's still in knots. Fine. Fine. Then it's garbage. No, Mom, don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just so proud of you. You look so yummy. <laughs> what a creepy scene. Erica continues to infantilize Nina, who has just landed the adult role of a lifetime. Erica also tries to sabotage her by forcing her to eat an enormous slice of cake. 
When Nina resists, Erica becomes manipulative, trying to make her feel guilty. Nina capitulates. She understands that this celebration is all about her mother's feelings and not really her own. When Erica says, I'm just so proud of you, her voice and face are full of anguish. She can't conceal the envy she feels. Nina later attends a gala event with the director of the ballet company. Erica was not invited and feels left out. In this next scene, you can sense her subtle envy. The appearance of an odd rash on Nina's back provokes an unusually harsh response and gives Erica the opportunity to lash out at her. Quite sounds like quite an evening. I wish I could have been there. You know I asked. I know you did. Susie told me. I guess he wanted you all to himself. Not why. I don't blame him. Hmm. Where'd you get these? They're fake. <laughs> Fool me. I can do it. You must have been by your side all night. Showing you off. Oh, Nina. It's just a rash. Oh, just a rash. What are you talking it was about? It a few days ago. It's fine already. Oh, you've been scratching yourself again. No, I have. Mom. I've not gone this disgusting habit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought you were done with this, Nina. The shrugs. You keep wearing the shrugs. Sit I down. Thin. You have the white one and the pink one. And that'll hide it. And then, and then I'll dig out that that expensive cover-up. We still have some. No one will see it. Dan, please. It's the role, isn't it? It's all this pressure. I, I knew it'd be too much. I knew it. Ow! Oh, shit. You're right. When Erica insists that she knew all along the part would be too stressful for Nina, she doesn't seem all that concerned. You get the feeling she actually wants Nina to fail. That way, she won't have to feel envious of her daughter's success. In the last scene I want to show, Nina wakes up feeling disoriented and confused. The night before, she had seemed to be very disturbed, part of her dreamlike and delusional effort to more fully occupy the darker side of her part, as well as her own dark side. Also to escape the prison of childhood in which Erica has trapped her. While Erica insists she is only motivated by love and concern, Nina understands that her mother actually wants to sabotage her. What time is it? Shh. The show is tonight. No, no, no. No, don't worry. I called the theater and I told them you weren't feeling well. I have to go. No, no, let me down. Go with me. We're staying in here until you feel better. Where is it? This rule's destroying you. Move. Nina. Move! What happened to my sweet girl, huh? She's gone! Oh, Nina! Oh, Nina! No, please! You're not well. Let go of me. You can't handle this. I can't. Swan Queen, you're the one who never left the court. Nina! Throughout the film, Erica tries to merge with her daughter, but in this pivotal scene, Nina announces her independence in a kind of violent rupture. I'm the Swan Queen, you're the one who never left the court. Now we can understand the source of Erica's envy. She spent years in the court, never rose to the level of soloist, and then presumably retired in order to rear Nina. For those of you who grew up with narcissistic mothers, these dynamics will seem familiar to you. Such a mother regards her children as extensions of herself. They may appear kindly and concerned, provided those children remain compliant like sweet girl Nina. But once they begin to separate and assert their independence, she may turn on them, especially if she resents their superior opportunities. She may come in the end to envy and hate them. If you haven't seen Black Swan, get a hold of a copy. It's a great movie and psychologically very astute, provided you don't take everything that happens literally. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.